Okay, so uh, funny story, guys. <laughs> I forgot. I scheduled to get my uh, laptop a battery replacement the day of the Oscars. Yeah, really smart. Okay, so um, obviously I'm shooting this from my iPhone. Very briefly after the Oscars are over, I'm going to try to get this as short as I can because I know I'm really not comfortable with this format. <laughs> uh, but uh, generally speaking, um, by the way, I'll uh, go ahead and write down. I didn't have my score written down, but I have all my notes from the winners here and losers. You can see all the winners that I had right. Good size column, right? Yeah, 18 out of 23 was my final score, so that's low 80s, uh, high 70s, somewhere in there. But um, yeah, I gotta say, I, I didn't do too terrible, and I actually called probably one of the bigger upsets of the night in Anthony Hopkins. I mean, I, I hated to see Chadwick lose, and I hated to do that to myself, but what can I say? I, I Everything I saw just told me to go that way, and I'm, I'm glad I got it right, but it's, uh, it's at a great expense. But, I mean, seriously, both of them were terrific performances, so I'm so glad that, I mean, and, and Riz Ahmed would have been great too, but... um. So glad that they, they went with Anthony Hopkins here. Or, yeah, and, and again, Chadwick would have been probably the one I voted for and the one that I, I think in history, yeah, we're going to look back and say probably should have won, but it's it's tough. It's tough to uh, to decide that one. Anyways, so uh, let's talk about the five I got wrong really quick here. And I think of them, I think two of those are probably your, your picks for biggest upset of the night because, like I said, best actress <laughs> – literally anyone winning that was not going to be an upset except Vanessa Kirby, who again, I would have loved to have seen win would have been my vote, but it was a uh, Francis McDormand, the BAFTA winner. So I'm like, <clears throat> it's all a Swinton thing. I probably should have gone with it. Oh, well, but, uh, and yeah, she has four Oscars now, uh, three for, uh, three for acting, one for producing. So she joins, um, okay. I don't know if I can name them all. Walter Brennan. Um, okay. Let me see here. Walter Brennan. Um, I think he's like one of the, he was like the first one to get three, I think, except maybe Catherine Hepburn beat him to it, maybe. Um, you have, um, you should have Denzel in that crowd, but he he almost won for offenses. Uh, God, I'm, I'm just blanking right now. Daniel Day-Lewis, of course, Meryl Streep. Um, geez, I know there's another obvious one that has three that I'm not thinking about. And, and I saw him the other day, and I can't, I, I, in a, I can't remember if it was a movie or if they were nominated here, I can't remember, but. Anyways, but uh, but yeah, uh, she joins a very distinct crowd there, and uh, obviously Nomadland, I was like, okay, I, I was seeing the way it was going there, um, and I was like, they're very split this year, it's like nobody's winning a ton of awards, I mean, we all knew there was really not going to be any big sweeps or anything this year, or pr not presumed to be, but I was like, okay, they're giving like Mank 2, so we'll talk about that one for cinematography, that was a, a pretty big upset. Uh, they gave Sound of Metal two. They gave um, Judas and the Black Messiah ended up getting two. Um, they gave uh, Ma Rainey's a couple. They gave Soul a couple. And uh, after that point, I was like, weird. I'm like, Nomadland has not won anything except director. And then it lost cinematography. I was like, Francis is going to win. And I just knew it at that moment. I was like, they're giving, they're saving it for Francis. Then, yep, that's that's going to be the third one. And, okay, we got to talk about it. What the fuck was that with Best Picture? What was that doing third to last or second to last? Or th yeah, third to last, sorry. But two cat I meant two categories after it. I'm like, what was what was that about? I mean, there was a lot. There were a couple what was that about moments here tonight. But um, uh, clearly that was one of them. Um, and I believe first, I, mean, I, I haven't looked in the history, but is that the first time in Oscar telecast history that Best Picture is presented at that point in the night, it's got to be, right? I mean, I don't think they presented it earlier than that. And it's really awkward to end the Oscars on, okay, you get Francis, who just gave us, uh, sorry, frankly, embarrassing moment with the whole turning, howling. I'm sorry, I, I get it was a thing with the character, was it? I can't even fucking remember. But, um... And I'll, I'll watch that movie again, absolutely. I, I want to see it again. And I know my folks at home, they just got Hulu and stuff. So they they said, okay, we want to check it out now that it's won. So um, I'll probably show it to them uh, as well. But um, but yeah, I, I think, I mean, and I have to say, I was texting back and forth to some, some people and I was like, up to that moment, I'm like, I loved her message about going back to the theaters, being shoulder to shoulder with other people. I'm like, yes, thank you. I'm like, I mean, obviously... In some places, we're not there yet. Obviously, you know, poor... I mean, India is just getting walloped right now. Um, it's like, uh, clearly, that's one market. And and definitely, I'm, I'm you know, glad that uh, we've seen a lot of news that, you know, the Biden administration, a lot of people are going to be helping out there. Um, 
and that's that's great news because they're they're just getting absolutely walloped right now. And and yeah, any help they can get is, is spectacular. But um uh but it's like, you know, otherwise in the US, you know, both Mortal Kombat and that Dragon Slayer movie both did fantastic business this weekend. Uh, Kong Godzilla's still sticking in there. We got some May releases coming up that are gonna be good, we think. Like uh, Quiet Place, Cruella. I, mean, they, I think they both open the same weekend, actually, but uh, I think they'll both do pretty well. Um, even the the Spiral uh, Saw spinoff movie, I think, will do okay because uh, you know the the one recent horror movie actually did pretty well. Um, with very, I I didn't even know about it until like a week before it came out. That Unholy movie or whatever. I mean, it looks you know pretty generic for uh, for that stuff. But uh, but that actually is doing like ten fifteen million dollars, which you know in a in a non pandemic market, a movie like that would probably only make like seven or something. You know, it would be way under the radar. But you know, good for them for getting a little bit more um, on it there. I'm sorry if I'm a little disgruntled or a little you know all over the place, but it's like well that's what the Oscars were tonight because that was that was a big thing. Like okay, why is Francis turning and howling now? Okay, I, I don't remember that in the movie, frankly, but um, that's weird. You know, so I was trying, was trying to say, yeah, the, the Oscars ended on that weird note where she howls, and then you have Anthony Hopkins win, which I think, I think in their minds they thought Chadwick had it because it's like, okay, we're going to end with like a beautiful speech by his widow who gave all these beautiful speeches at like SAG and especially at the Globes and stuff. It's like we're going to end on a very powerful message and stuff, and it's Anthony Hopkins who's a no show, and yeah, he didn't even uh, phone in or anything, yeah. Anyways, I know I, I I think other than the time he won for Silence of the Lambs, he hasn't been in person uh, when he's been nominated since. So it's like okay, so then just Joaquin's up there like okay, bye. <laughs> oh boy, I mean I, I they must have tranked Joaquin because he was very <laughs> grounded tonight. But obviously he's just a presenter, so I don't know. But um, but yeah, I mean um, that was really awkward. Um, and then you cut to like Questlove, who's been the music person all night, and he's like, "Uh, oh, okay, we're we're done, we're done, bye." It's like, oh man, I don't know what that was about. But yeah, Francis, you know, had just given that speech or whatever, and then she just gave a very short acceptance speech for actress because um, I don't know, I don't think she was really accept uh, or uh, anticipating it, and I think um, a lot of like I was on the Viola Davis train, you know, I was thinking I actually almost switched to Carrie Mulligan last minute there, but um. Yeah, it's like, I kept thinking, about, I'm like, well, it hasn't, you know, even though it's a, obviously a terrific performance, uh, hers, Vanessa's, I mean, the, and Francis are probably, yeah, the top three in that category. But, uh, but yeah, I was like, I don't know, the, the, all these awards bodies have not been loving the performance. It's, it'd be weird for the Oscars to come back all of a sudden and give it to her, even though we knew Promising Young, Young Woman was very likely to win that uh, screenplay prize. Speaking of which, that was the first award of the night, and um, and it seemed like, okay, they're following, remember 2015, they had a very similar thing there, where they did screenplay first, and then they kind of worked through, okay, here's how the progression of movie making works, you know, so they do that, and then they start with, I think it was like art direction was next, or costume, it was like one of those, it was like all through the text and stuff, and they would sprinkle in, you know, more stuff like acting categories, and uh, um, the shorts, and doc feature, and animated feature, uh, foreign language, or, you know, as, as, as it was known at the time. Um, but yeah, they, they kind of started with that and then abandoned it totally. <laughs> I mean, that, that, that didn't really make a lot of sense either. Um, yeah. So, um, so, uh, yeah. So anyways, that was that, that was another kind of confusing note for the night. Um, but otherwise generally I did like the idea of shooting it. I don't know how they shot it, but like the widescreen and stuff looked terrific, looked like an actual, it was like, you know, movie quality and stuff. And I was like, uh, I was a big fan of that. Um, yeah, so I was, uh, whoever, I think Glenn Weiss was the director here. I got to give him some props for that, at least. I think that part of the show, I think, went off really well. Um, clearly, you know, everybody being there in person in a smaller venue, it, it worked. It really worked. It looked good. Um, uh, but, but it, of course, it was kind of, kind of painstaking to see poor, uh, not poor, but you know, <laughs> to see Brian Cranston walking all through the Dolby. Like, that's where they have had the Oscars for almost the uh, last 20 years. And, um, you know, to see that just empty, I was like, oh, what could have been, but you know, obviously, you know, safety first. I, I get it. I get it. Um, anyway, so, uh, what else do we want to talk about here? Um, yeah, let's talk about the other ones I got wrong here. So like Nomadland losing cinematography, like I said, that was an early sign. I was like, okay, yeah, Nomadland is either going to lose picture now, or it's not, it's going to pick up Francis in picture to get three. Um, but I, I knew it wasn't going to get the four. It's just something told me it wasn't going to get the four. Um, and Mank wins, which, you know, I, I kind of dismissed the Cinematographer's Guild giving it to Mank, but I don't know. It turns out Mank was actually a little bit stronger than maybe we thought. I mean, I still, I, and I kind of thought about it a little bit, actually, as the show was going on, because I was like, 
you know, um, I was kind of thinking about it because I'm like, Mank really doesn't seem like a film that gets that top 5% or whatever from of number one votes in the first voting stage. I'm like, so it would be, it would have been understandable on Oscars morning if, for example, I don't know, Ma Rainey's was a Best Picture nominee and Mank was not, you know, uh, that would have made sense. But um, clearly it, it was not, it was the other way around. And uh, I don't know, it just, it was actually a little bit more popular, I think, than we, than we thought it was. Um, otherwise, uh, the other two were in the shorts I got wrong and that was um, Letter Room. I had that one wrong for live action short that went to Two Distant Strangers who I thought had a chance. So I wish I would have pulled the button on that one and thought about it a little more and switched, but I didn't. And then Concerto is a conversation. That one also was not, it was not the favorite, actually. I was calling an upset there, but an even slightly smaller, uh, or a slightly bigger upset happened with Colette winning, which is the uh, kind of Holocaust one, which is, I really was, I hadn't really talked about that one much, but it's like, I almost always pick the Holocaust one because they tend to win in the doc category or the short category, uh, live action film, I mean. Um, but it did, you know, and I'm like, sometimes I'll pick it and it doesn't win. So I'm like, this time I'm like, nope, it's the, you know, it's kind of seems on the surface like, oh, Holocaust, you know, bing. But, uh, but I was like, no, not this time. And it won. Yep. Okay. <laughs> uh, that happens sometimes. So, yeah. So I didn't get a chance to write it down here. But yeah, Nomadland has the most awards the night of uh, with three with picture, director, and actress. Um and then we had really a lot of splits happening there with the two wins. Judas and Black Messiah came back with two wins, supporting actor and song, which is, I think, the only one we haven't talked about for the ones I got wrong. So, one, yeah, One Night Miami's uh, Speak Now, which we kind of knew was a weak front runner. Yeah, that lost to Fight For You from Judas and the Black Messiah, which I really don't know how that one won, other than just the popularity of the artist, her, who, you know, I, I don't keep up with modern music, so I'm sorry. Uh, but I didn't know of her until the nominations came out. But, um... Probably just a you know popularity of the uh, the singer and the the writer and everything there probably helped it. Plus, I mean the popularity of the film too. I mean, uh, you know even though we knew Daniel Kaluuya was going to win, I mean we all knew it wasn't really a token win. It's like they put it in Best Picture, they put Lucky Stanfield, and they liked this movie. They saw this movie, they liked it. Um, let's see. Otherwise, um, who else had two? Yeah, the father ended up with the two I had down: adapted screenplay and actor. Soul, the two we all had down: animated feature and score. Um, sound of metal had sound and editing, so not sound editing. I know I've been, I dropped my pen. We've been making that joke all year, but, um, yeah, so I'm glad I stuck my guns on that one. It didn't go, uh, Chicago seven on screenplay or editing. Cause I thought eh, there's kind of a shaky chance that it could win one or one or both. Uh, but it did not mank. Cause we said I ended up with two production design and cinematography. Ma Rainey's got the makeup and costume wins. And I think that's it for the multiple ones. But, um, but yeah, very, very split year on the Oscars. So yeah, I think really when you look at it, I think Chicago 7 was the only Best Picture nominee to go home empty-handed. It went 0 for 6. And I, yeah, I just, it just didn't seem like there was a very obvious place to award it. Because um, I think there was enough infighting with screenplay with Promising Young Woman. Uh, editing Sound of Metal clearly had a lot of popularity there. And then Picture, um, yeah, I, I just don't think it had quite enough support. It, it was probably a little closer than we thought it was. Like I said, maybe Judas and the Black Messiah with its two wins Maybe that one was maybe a little bit closer than we thought it was. Um, even, um, I don't know, I mean, maybe even The Father, you know, kind of made a last push there. And maybe that had some more number ones, twos, threes, fours than than uh, some other films out there. So, um, yeah, so I, I think I think Nomadland won. But I think, I mean, if we looked at the vote totals, it probably didn't win by as big a margin as maybe some people thought it would. But, um, I mean, clearly, you know, we're, we're just speculating on that because I think if No Man Land had won four, I think then we could have made the argument, oh, it's like Parasite. It probably was just maybe even on the first vote, you know, had enough popular uh, number one votes. It maybe had like 48% already of number one votes, for example. Um, and uh, and it really just needed just a couple other films eliminated to get to, to 50% plus one vote. Um, no Man Land probably took a little bit longer than that, I'm going to guess, just by just on the basis of the popularity in the room. But obviously, that's a very, very small um, audience to measure it up against. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't really know. I mean, other than maybe, um, I don't know, I don't really, I didn't really get a sense in the room of like, which ones were more, maybe more popular or as popular. Uh, you know, it's, it's obviously very tough when it's a very, you know, this is kind of the first time we've seen it. Um, but yeah, Judas and the Black Messiah definitely had its fans, I think. Minari had its fans. Father had its fans. Um, 
Sound of Metal had its fans. So, uh, yeah, I think even to an extent, Chicago 7 had its fans in the room. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, so uh, what else do we want to talk about here? Um, quickly, we can kind of run down. So, yeah, we already mentioned picture director, actress. So, yeah, actor for Anthony Hopkins. Yeah, we kind of talked about that up front. That was the last word of the night. But, um, oh, man, I was, I mean, I was really, you know... I, 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 you know, I'm not a rat person. I'm not somebody who says, you know, comes back and says, oh, I actually switched. And here's, you know, the five that I got wrong. I actually changed my prediction to that. And now I'm right. I'm perfect 23. No, I'm not one of these people. So, <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah. So, um, basically, uh, yeah, I, I, I thought about it again after the final video and I was like, it's probably going to be Chad. Like I'm probably dead wrong on that. I'm going to look like such a doofus and, you know, and all that. But, um, I don't know. I, I mean, to some extent, I got to do that a little bit here because I know, you know, all the guys at Gold Derby, except for like Zach Laws, I think was the only one who had uh, Hopkins in there still. Um, and he, I mean, he, he changed right after BAFTA. I saw their, their video there. And I'm like, I, it, it was tempting. Yeah. And I was like, you know, I was like, nope, I restrained myself. I stuck with Ma Rainey. I stuck with uh, Chadwick for the, for a while there. I think it was, I can't remember if it was Tuesday or Wednesday night, but one of those nights I was like, I had to give in. I was like, I'm just seeing just enough evidence. I'm like, I think, I think Hopkins can do it. So yeah. And I don't know my, yeah, like I said, my folks have seen the father and they loved it. Uh, then they especially, especially loved a uh, Hopkins performance. But again, remember my, uh, my mother, both, I mean, to, to some extent, both her parents, my, her, her mother, my grandmother, uh, passed away directly from complications of, of, uh, Alzheimer's and dementia, uh, coming up on uh, two years ago now. And, uh, or no shit, uh, coming up on three years ago now, I'm sorry, uh, in November, or sorry, yeah, in November, uh, I remember she passed away on, on her birthday of all things, but, um, so I know for her and for myself to an extent watching the movie, it's, it was a very emotional performance. And of course, a lot of that's anchored in Anthony Hopkins, who is one of the greatest living actors, uh, and he gave one of his all time best performances. So part of the reason I switched also kind of had to do with that. I know my mo my mom and my dad at home were rooting for Anthony Hopkins to win, so um, they definitely uh, they definitely liked him. But again, like I said, they haven't seen Ma Rainey's. I think if they did, they would probably be like me, like, man, they're both giving master classes. But I would, you know, just by a hair, I would say, yeah, maybe maybe not even by a hair, but but still, I think Chadwick still gave the better performance, and I think his his performance is going to stand the test of time. I think and. Um, uh, obviously he's, you know, he was a, a very good actor in other films, Thir uh, or not 13th, sorry, um, 13th is a script I've worked on for a Friday the 13th spinoff, but yeah, more about that later, <laughs> some other time, uh, no, uh, 42, God, I was, it was a number movie, I know, 42, and obviously the, uh, all his performances is Black Panther in the Marvel films, and, uh, this, uh, obviously this one with, uh, uh, Levy in, uh, Ma Rainey's, but, uh, yeah, I mean, but yeah, and, and Hopkins' performance was, was obviously terrific too, but, um, but yeah, I know, um, yeah, that was, that was one I was, it was very cliffhanger moment for me. So I'm like, okay, I, I'm either, I'm either going to be really excited that I got it right and at the same time, very remorseful that I got it right. Or I'm just going to be like, oh yeah, idiot. And, and glad that, that Chadwick had won, but no, it's all right. It's all right. Life moves on. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, maybe, I mean, maybe up above Chadwick's like, you know what? I'm good. I'm good with everything. And I know he obviously uh, lived life t to the fullest he could, work in, working as late as he did, as sick as he was. Uh, that's a guy who put all his work into the craft. And, and uh, it's that's something a lot of actors won't do, you know. Um, I, you know, and I kind of thought about it this week because we had like uh, Jack Nicholson's birthday. He's, he's, that's the one. Nicholson's got three three Oscars now. So yeah, Francis McDormand's in the same crowd as Jack Nicholson. Yeah, there you go. Um he had just, just had his birthday. I'm like, man, he hasn't been in a movie in 10 years. And yet he's probably got still some good performances in him that he can pull off and stuff. He could have even been the father. He could have been in that film, but uh, obviously Florian Zeller did a, had a brilliant choice in the, in Anthony Hopkins. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I'm like, you know, somebody like him, you know, I don't, as far as we know, he's not sick or anything, but just, you know, the fact that, you know, he spent like the last almost 12 years now not doing any films, you know, a couple have circulated, uh, that he's been attached to, but then they fall apart, you know, but, um, you know, and that, obviously I'm not, you know, trying to drag him down or anything, but it's just, you know, you'll see one example of Chadwick, you know, who continues to work, looks forward to the work, uh, and, and still puts in terrific work despite, you know, everything going on. 
And then you'll have, you know, other, and, you know, maybe Jack, you know, he's had, he has had a long, long career. He's probably just happy where he is, but, um, you know, you'll have those two different, um, respects to the work and stuff. And it's like, still with Chadwick, you know, you got to give a, a hats off to him for that. Okay. Who else do we want to talk about here? Um, yeah. So the, the, yeah, Francis winning, like I said, anybody in that category, except for maybe, uh, uh, Vanessa Kirby would probably be, you know, considered a, you know, not obvious choice, but you know, more a, uh, halfway expected choice because it was so split through the season. It was wide open. Um, so yeah, yeah, that one was, uh, that was one. It's like, yeah, the BAFTA winner coming through. I, you know, it was like Mark Rylance, like we mentioned, Tilda Swinton, a few of those examples. So yeah, and Anthony Hopkins, for example. But I didn't, I, I was weird too, because I was like, I kind of, like I was saying in the last video, I thought about, you know, and I actually did switch to Carrie Mulligan for half a second or half a minute, rather. It was almost a full 30 seconds. But then I was like, I was looking at Francis too, but I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to go with both the BAFTA winners and be wrong. So yeah. So yeah, and speaking of BAFTA, they picked Nomadland for film. Best picture, Nomadland. So their streak is of, of you know, picking the wrong one is over. <laughs> Finally, they have a uh, best picture winner that lines up with the Oscars. All right, uh, let's see here. Um, so yeah, they actually got all the top eight categories lining up directly. That's uh, that's first time that's happened in a while. Um, obviously, you have to go back to like the era, you know, 12 Years a Slave, which I think even 12 Years a Slave, I remember they picked Jennifer Lawrence over uh, Lupita, so we know that one was uh, incorrect there. And then I think they, they obviously they went with Ben Affleck for director for Argo when he wasn't nominated at the Oscars, so we know that one didn't line up. And okay, I'm thinking through here. 2011, I can't remember. I think they did pick Jean Dujard Dujardin over, um, over George Clooney. I think they did pick Meryl Streep over... Um, uh, Viola, De or yeah, Meryl Streep over Viola Davis. Oh, I think they, it was like this, maybe one of the supporting categories they got wrong. I can't remember, but, um, that might've been the last one actually it's 20, the year of 2011. I have to look that one up separately, but I know 2010, they picked like David Fincher and they did not have either Christian Bale or Melissa Leo even nominated in supporting for the fighter. Um, yeah. So anyways, that's, yeah, that's a brief history there. Okay. Uh, but yeah, the two supporting categories went the way we thought we did, uh, with, uh, Daniel Kaluuya winning supporting actor and Yuya Jung winning for supporting actress. Uh, and, and I mean, she, Tyler Perry, I mean, both of them had great, probably two of the night's best speeches. Um, and the, uh, the, uh, the crew that won for, uh, Doc Short, Colette, you know, acknowledging the other nominees and stuff, uh, you know, talking about their subject matter and stuff, you know, which obviously you could just research it and say it, but it's just the way they talk about it. I'm like, I can, I know they, they saw the other nominees and stuff. That was a wonderful moment. Um, and the winners for um, the doc feature, the, the octopus teacher one, I, I like too. Um, yeah, I mean, really generally there were no, obviously there were no bad speeches except for maybe, <laughs> maybe when Francis did the howl moment, which I know I was like, oh, I said, I, I immediately told everybody, I'm like, that's going to be the highlight reel tomorrow. That's all anybody's going to want to talk about. And fucking hell, she gave a great moment there when she was talking about, let's all go back to the theaters, let's all be a community in the movie theater again, she said, and, you know, she said, see Nomadland in the theater, on the biggest screen you can, and all that, and I'm like, yes, thank you, Francis, because I'm, I'm always a, a big movie theater supporter guy, and I'm like, well, that all went away because you just brought all the attention to the, yeah, so, mm, no, I wasn't a big fan of that, but, um, let's see here, what else, um, I don't know. I mean, I don't know uh, what else was like. Oh, I know the the whole Glenn Close thing doing uh, what was it called the booty or whatever the dance there. It's like uh, it was a little scripted, <laughs> just a little obvious that it was scripted. But uh, but it was great to see Del uh, uh, Lil Ray Howery and um, uh, Daniel Kaluuya back together again for a half second, where he's like, "I told you to get out of the house, man." <laughs> Oh, and I just, it just immediately kicked back the, the ending of Get Out. And I'm like, yes, yes, please. More of that. That's awesome. That was fantastic. Um, yeah. Otherwise, um, I, yeah, keep going with the other winners here. Screenplay. Yep. Promising Young Woman and The Father in their respective categories, which, um, I mean, some people still had Nomadland for adapted screenplay. Some had, uh, Chicago 7 winning original. So, I mean, they were kind of a little up in the air, but, um, but yeah, I I was not super super confident in these, but I was like, you know, they're they're probably the ones. And then um 
Let's see here, who else? Uh, yeah, we mentioned, yeah, the feature categories here real quick. Uh, animated Feature Soul, International Film, Another Round, uh, which, yeah, uh, Venterberg's speech, I mean, it, w it was a little rambly. I mean, Daniel Kaluuya's speech was way too rambly for me. I mean, way all over the place. And his uh, the, those first, like, three speeches with the screenplay winners, Daniel Kaluuya, and then um, uh, Venterberg's speech, I'm sorry, way too long. I mean, uh, good material in all the speeches, to be sure, but way too long. I mean, I was like, timing, I'm like, okay, these are like six-minute speeches. I mean, they feel like it, but I know they're not. They're probably closer to like four or whatever, but um, I'm like, these are way too long, and especially Kaluuya's and, to some extent, Emerald Fennel's, just uh, way too rambly for me. Um, you know, and I gotta, I, I gotta admit, though, I did say at the time that Chadwick's speech at the SAGs was, was kind of rambly, too, but, you know, his was unexpected, but whereas, you know, but to an extent, it's like, okay, you know, that's, that's okay in Chadwick's case, you know, and I'm not just saying that now because he's passed, but, you know, but it's like, you know, he was, un, it was unexpected for him, and I remember, I actually remember saying that in that, uh, SAG follow-up video I, I did at the time. I was like, yeah, he, they weren't expecting it, whatever, you know, but it was like, oh, it was just a little too rambly for me. Yeah, but I mean, uh, Zeller, you know, he's had a shot at a speech at BAFTA. Emerald Fennell's given plenty of speeches now recently for Promising Young Woman. And Daniel Kaluuya has given so many memorable good speeches from the Globes all the way up to BAFTA. And this one, I'm sorry, he was just way too all over the place and at times uh, unintelligible. But just some of it, I mean, I didn't have captions on or anything, but it's like, I, I pity the people that were doing the live captioning because I don't know how they can make out what he said because it was sometimes just a little too uh, hard to understand. But um, I was like, oh, that's too bad. I'm like, look, and I, t I told my folks, just Google one of his other speeches because he, he does great acceptance speeches. And he did have some good ones. Uh, like I said, at the Globes, especially that one, um, you know, good stuff. But, uh, but yeah, this one just a little too rambly for me. And like I said, I, I haven't been too critical of any of the shows this year because, of course, it's a COVID year. Everybody gets a mulligan this year. But eh, just because it's the last show, I'll kind of give it some <laughs> give it some some shit here. Um, let's see here. Let's go into the uh, tech categories here. Um, I kind of have these written all over the place, but let's, uh, try our best here. Um, let's see, cinematography, yeah, we talked about that one going to Mank over Nomadland. That one was one of the bigger upsets of the night, I think, uh, arguably. I mean, I mean, you gotta say, in all honesty, though, from where experts had it and stuff, probably Anthony Hopkins is the biggest upset, but since I did switch toward the end, I was like, I can't really call it a huge major upset, because I had it predicted, at least, and I know, definitely, like I said, there were some that stuck with Anthony Hopkins, um... Like, uh, I didn't even know this, but uh, uh, Dan Merle, who I had a uh, follow on, on Twitter, I actually looked at his, he posted his Oscar ballot. I'm like, I looked through, I'm like, shit, we agree on all 23 categories, except for one. He had, and he got it right. He had Two Distant Strangers. I had The Letter Room, but it's like, otherwise we agreed on all 23 categories. I'm like, there's a smart guy. Um, yeah, so I guess he ended up with 19 out of 23, but still <laughs> good on us for, for uh, some pretty spot on predictions in some cases. Um, and yeah, he, he called Anthony Hopkins. So good for him. So I, yeah, there were definitely some out there. I wasn't the only one, but, um, but yeah, that one, yeah, that, that's probably, that's probably going to be the one that people talk about as the biggest upset, probably. Um, unless you weren't thinking sound of metal for, uh, for editing or unless you weren't thinking, um, uh, I'm trying to think, were there any other ones that were like genuine, genuine, like, uh, upsets that I was calling? Not really. No, not really. No. And like I said, actress, it feels, it felt like it was way too wide open. I don't think anybody can really call those any true upsets for anybody winning. Um, you know, definitely Carrie Mulligan, I think, had the most, you know, votes and stuff for uh, a lot of people, Oscarologists and the Gold Derby experts and stuff. Carrie, I think, had the most votes. But um, yeah, yeah, I, I uh, like I said, it was so split through the year. I, I just didn't really see that one as, as a, you know, huge upset opportunity there. Um, otherwise, yeah, I think it is those other ones we talked about. Colette in, uh, Doc Short, um, arguably Two Distant Strangers in, um, Live Action Short. But again, that was one that had been gaining steam, I think, in the last couple weeks. And I, I saw it, but I didn't take it. And then, um, yeah, Cinematography Mank and Song for Fight for You, Judas and Black Messiah. Those are probably your two biggest upsets in, you know, uh, with the caveat of, uh, Anthony Hopkins for those that just absolutely did not buy it and just thought it was Chadwick. Um, yeah, let's see here. Um, what else? Um, 
Let's see, so that one editing, yep, we talked about Sound of Metal. So I was I was glad I, I had that one right because I again I sensed more passion around that one in that in that category. And again, like Whiplash, you know, a few years ago, that one had I think the passionate votes to win editing and sound. And the other one I forgot, of course, J.K. Simmons. I can't believe I was going through, like, it had three wins. What's the third one? I can't think of it. It's J.K., you dumb fuck. I don't know how I didn't know that. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Otherwise, uh, production design going to Mank. Yep, that was you know, pretty expected. Uh, makeup going to Ma Rainey's. That was expected. So we did not end up having our makeup and actor or actress winning uh, crossover. That did not happen this time. Costume, Ma Rainey's. Effects went to Tenet. The two, yeah, music categories we talked about briefly, uh, Fight for You, Judas and the Black Messiah. And then score uh, going to Seoul. And then for the shorts, yeah, we you know have talked about most everyone except for, um, uh, and I didn't have it written down, but uh, uh, animated short I had right with um, If Anything Happens, I Love You. But again, that one was probably the most secure of the three. Um, and animated sometimes is the most secure of the shorts sometimes. But um, yep, the other two I got wrong, like we mentioned there. All right. Um, let's see, anything else we want to really talk about here? I mean... Um, I don't know. I mean, In Memoriam was good. Tyler Perry getting a humanitarian award was excellent, and his stories were great. Uh, and I, you know, frankly, you know, not to say we haven't, you know, that every other speech before this by an African-American <laughs> kind of stuck out to me. But, um, you know, you got the sense that there was a lot of, you know, community healing. But, like, to, to actually see and hear Tyler Perry say the words, you know, don't hate cops, don't hate white people. Because, you know, especially if you listen to one side of the news, you know, you're going to see a lot of people saying, oh, everybody in Hollywood thinks this way and stuff. It's like, to see somebody actually say that, I was like, okay, good. Then we actually do have, you know, more or less a balanced perspective in that way. Um, cause you know, up to that point, you, know, you had, um, and actually after that, you had Angela Bassett talking about in, in memoriam, she talked about the lives lost COVID. And then she threw in, you know, some, uh, you know, obviously a lot of press we've seen over the past uh, 12 months with, um, uh, you know, lots of uh, African-American individuals, most of them younger, uh, losing their lives in, uh, situations involving police and everything. So she threw that in. Um, uh, the winners of Two Distant Strangers, yeah, the the one uh, mentioned it as well. So, you know, um, and I know, uh, you know, my parents are pretty, <laughs> I'm not going to throw them under the bus, but yeah, they were like, oh, we, mm, we're not going to go in, into it, but they, I don't know. But I was, like I said, my attitude always is when it comes to the speeches, getting into politics and the speeches, I'm like, they got up there, it's their award, they can do with, with their time what they want to do. If you are at home disagreeing, that's okay. It's okay to disagree with that. It's okay to feel, oh, I don't, you know, I don't care about that. What they say I disagree with. It's okay to feel that way. And it's okay to even decry it. But, um, but still, until you get up there winning an award, you know, to some extent, I have to say, yeah, just listen and move on. <laughs> like I said, you can, and, and again, feel free to disagree and stuff and feel free to uh, not agree with every last word that's said during the telecast. But, um, uh, but still, you know, uh, they got up there, they gave the speech, so let them have it, <laughs> let them have their time. Um, anyways, but, uh, but yeah, otherwise, yeah, we did see a lot of African-American winners here tonight. I mean, uh, uh, two people of color, I mean, uh, one of them is, you know, Korean, of course, for Yu Jung, but, uh, you know, another acting winner was, uh, African-American. I had, uh, three of the, you know, and again, we didn't get that this year. I thought this would be the year where we get three people of color winning uh, in the acting categories because I thought for sure <laughs> either Viola or Chadwick would win, but you know they both ended up not getting it. And like BAFTA, it was just the tech categories for Ma Rainey's, uh, and it was actually the same too. Um, so I'm like, oh, okay, but um, yeah. Anyways, um, so uh, but yeah, like I said, tons of these, yeah, tons of these craft categories, like the costume design category. I know we had a winner there. Uh, uh, no, sorry, makeup, makeup. I'm sorry, on Ma Rainey's makeup. It was the makeup one because the costume designer one, uh, she was absent. Uh, Soul, yep, we had an African-American winner there. Uh, tons of people of color, you know, uh, otherwise, you know, are represented like we mentioned, you know, with like director, picture. Um, let's see here, who else? Um, I think uh, he wasn't there, but Soul, I think one of the uh, people on that is is a person of color. Um Let's see. I know they showed up when it won at the uh, the Golden Globes. He he showed up. He skyped in or whatever. Uh, yet we mentioned two distant strangers. Um, Fight for you. You know that whole one was. Uh, um, yeah, and almost that whole you know behind the scenes crew was was obviously uh, uh, blacks, but uh, but yeah, and then obviously they they threw together a great film, but. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I mean, that's, and that's pretty, you know, it's, it's always good to have that, that diversity in there. And I always say, you know, the, the people who win the Oscars should be the best in their field. And I think arguably in, in a lot of these cases, 
they were the best this year. Absolutely. Um, all right. Uh, anything else we want to talk about? Um, I guess not really. I mean, yeah. I mean, the Oscar telecast, there's always a couple things that go awry or something. I mean, we didn't, uh, like I said, that best picture when it was presented, I think a lot of people are going to talk about that. I mean, I, yeah, I, I was really weirded out. I'm like, I text, I'm, I'm like, I know I did not just black out and miss best actor and best actress. <laughs> I literally went up, got, you know, got something to drink or whatever during the commercial break and they came back and it was Jane Fonda and she had best picture. I'm like, uh, what? Uh, hang on. Yeah, I don't think I blacked out. I don't think I missed anything. Where's best actor? Where's best actress? What, what's going on? <laughs> and, and then it said nominees. And I was like, oh, she's just doing like a clip package. But I'm like, but she has an envelope. They're not, they're not doing this. No, they're not doing this right now. And then they started showing like longer clips. I'm like, it is a clip package. Okay, maybe she just has the envelope. She's going to say, okay, I'll be right back or something. Like maybe they actually cued her a little too early. And like, maybe it was like a tech, you know, <laughs> like we had that horror story almost five years ago now with uh, Moonlight La La Land and all that. I'm like, maybe it's one of those and they caught it this time. <laughs> no, no, they did best picture at that time. I was like, okay. And, and then she said, and the winner, I'm like, no, what are they doing? Oh, to break precedent, precedent in that way. Oh, it was so weird. And yeah, I mean, I, I know I, I, when I watch later the Gold Derby and some of the other, you know, Scott Mance and all those guys, when they talk about this, they are, I think they're going to be very critical. My And obviously having not seen anything yet, they're going to be very critical of where Best Picture was presented because they're very, kind of like myself, purist in that way where it's like, well, Best Picture is like your top award. Like the articles tomorrow and everything, all your news flashes are going to say who won Best Picture. So that should be the last category, right? It's like your most significant award. No, nope. okay, just present it then, okay, whatever. Um, and yeah, like I said, just leave it to be awkward with Francis and somebody, Anthony Hopkins, who's not there. And, you know, and obviously if Chadwick had won, you know, we know we know he isn't there. But uh, I think, you know, they would have had his widow uh, speak for him, I believe. Um, as far as I know, uh, maybe it wasn't, um, maybe it wasn't gonna be this time, but, uh, but still, I was like, oh, okay, that is really awkward to end on that note. But, uh, but still, yeah. Anyways, um, what else do we want to talk about here? Um, oh, I know. I want to talk about a little bit about uh, maybe a preview of next year's stuff. Now, again, if I had my laptop, I would be able to go through the 2021 stuff and say, okay, here's, you know, at this point in the race, these are the ones that are projected to come out, and here's who we think stands a good shot and stuff. I got to say, though, even without that, I got to say up at the top of my list right now after that first trailer is West Side Story. That looks fucking phenomenal. Spielberg looks like he did it. He pulled it off. It looks like he has a great cast, great singing, great dancing, great choreography. I mean, obviously the music's going to be great because it's Bernstein and it's uh, all that stuff. Kushner did the script. Tony Kushner, who just, I, I think, should have won the Oscar for uh, Lincoln adapting that uh, and was nominated for Munich working with Spielberg in the past. I'm like, wow, I, I'm like ready to see this movie now. I'm like, it looks incredible. I mean, we, we're probably going to see nominations as long as it's good across the board in editing and uh, and the sound category and maybe an acting category or two. Maybe Rita Morano actually comes back. I know it's, she's not playing the same role, but, uh, obviously, but uh, maybe she comes back and gets nominated again in supporting actress. Uh, director, potentially. Picture, screenplay, you know, all that stuff. It's like... Um, it's not to mention costume design, production design, uh, maybe uh, Krumpke, you know, which is a kind of famous character, you know, it wasn't nominated in the original film, but maybe he gets nominated. I think it's, um, oh, it's, uh, what's his name uh, from Spotlight? The the one news guy that nobody knew, <laughs> who you know, who wasn't like a super famous actor at the point. Um, oh, I, I know I'm going to think about it. I know it's going to come out to me later, but I cannot remember his name right now. Oh, it's, uh, it, I had it and I lost it just now. Okay. Um, but yeah, he's, and he's been in a lot of good stuff. Um, I think it's him anyways, but, uh, but still, I'm like, yeah, I just saw the trailer for that. I'm like, yes, yes. I don't know. It, in the Heights, it uh, looks all right. I don't know. I haven't seen Hamilton. I don't really, I don't know. It doesn't really seem like it's my thing, but, um, I, I'm sure when I do see it eventually, it's going to be phenomenal, but, <laughs> cause everybody else loved it. But, um, uh, but yeah, this one in the Heights, I mean, Jimmy Smith's is in it. I'm like, I haven't seen Jimmy Smith's in a long time and you know, he's great in everything. Even the Star Wars prequels, he's one of the few actually good redeemable uh, uh, good parts of the, of those movies and stuff, especially in Revenge of the Sith. Um, so I'm, I'm always glad to see him on in there. Um, 
But I'm like, the rest of it, I'm like, I don't know. It just looks like a standard musical otherwise. I mean, obviously it's going to have, you know, the strong political message about the dreamers, the, you know, uh, uh, what was it, DACA or whatever. Uh, w one of those, whatever the political thing that I don't really know about is. It's clearly going to have a good message with that. It's going to be, you know, inclusive in that way. And it looks like it's a very diverse cast and everything. So, yeah, I'm sure I'm sure it'll be at least good. But it's like, I don't know. I just looked at the two. I'm like, just judging. I'm like, oh, it's got to be West Side Story <laughs> for me. And I, the original is so good, too. So maybe I'm a little biased in that way. But, um, yeah. And who knows? Yeah, maybe at the end of the day, In the Heights is the very easily superior one. Maybe. Uh, we don't know. Because, you know, we're not going to know until uh, probably full eight months from now when we're all able to see uh, West Side Story. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, geez. Off the top of my head. Oh, God. Because I did not prepare for this. Um, look out for maybe... Um, I know Edgar Wright's not usually one that gets huge into the Oscar race, but that Last Night in Soho might be interesting. Uh, that might get... Uh, I don't know if it'll get any Oscar buzz, but it's like we do have um, Anya Taylor-Joy, who is sweeping everything right now on the uh, TV side for Queen's Gambit. And uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, Mc uh, Thomas and McKenzie, who was in Jojo Rabbit, uh, really good in that. Uh, and she got a bunch of awards for the uh, Leave No Trace movie. They're the two stars in it. So I'm like, okay, well, Oscar voters will be f at least somewhat familiar with them. So I, I mean, obviously, I don't know the performances yet. Maybe they'll be considered, maybe not. Maybe it's not a performance movie. Um, I know that one was one that was supposed to come out last year. And uh, now we're looking forward to it, I think, in October. Uh, speaking of which, uh, No Time to Die is supposed to come out in October. So... I don't know about that one, but the song eligibility, because I know everybody was thinking that Billie Eilish would win best song for it. Um, but uh, I don't know if it's even going to be eligible now because it was released. They released the song like uh, I think it was a month or two months ahead of the movie because obviously they didn't know it was going to be switched uh, for you know such a long date and stuff. So I, I don't know if it's going to be eligible or not. We'll, we'll have to see how they uh, rule on that. Um, just off the top of my head, I would think because it's released that early, no, but... Um, I don't know. And maybe they'll make an exception. I don't know. But um, otherwise, that one, maybe a, a couple tech categories and stuff. And pushing it to October, closer to more of the Oscar-friendly stuff coming out in that season and stuff, that might uh, really benefit No Time to Die if it is a really good film. Um, hmm. See, I know the... Uh, speaking of uh, Jojo Rabbit, Taika Waititi's um, newest one... Um, oh, what was it called? Oh. For a second, I thought it was going to be nominated this year, but then they pushed it back. It's got Michael Fassbender, Elizabeth Moss, that one. Uh, the, maybe the title will come back to me later. But um, uh, James Darcy something, the guy from Spotlight. See, I told you it would come to me. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I told you it would come to me, but um, that's part of his name at least. Um, I believe he's Crunky in West Side Story. But um, Next Goal Wins. Next Goal Wins. It came to me there. It's good. My memory is actually triggering tonight. Um uh, Next Goal Wins uh, is from Taika Waititi. So maybe watch for that one. I know that was, I think it's Searchlight has that one. Okay, anything else, I mean, that I can obviously remember off the top of my head. Um, oh, I, I heard the other day, the uh, uh, Paul Thomas Anderson. Uh, he's got his movie that's about, I don't know if it's called High School, but it's centered around high school. And he's got Philip Seymour Hoffman's uh, son is like the main character or one of the main characters. Um Tell you what, PTA is always interesting, if if anything else. Like, I always say for him, like, uh, uh, Magnolia, I think, is the best summation of his career. Because the first two hours of Magnolia is phenomenal filmmaking, probably the best filmmaking he's ever done. And then the last hour might be the worst <laughs> hour that he's ever done in a film. Because it's just, uh, I don't know, maybe that's just me. But it's like those first two hours are so incredibly epic, so well acted. Everybody from Tom Cruise to Philip uh, Seymour Hoffman to uh, um, Philip Baker Hall, who gives performance of his career there as Jimmy Gator, um, Jason Robards and Julianne Moore, of course, and even John C. Riley. It's like this huge ensemble and William H. Macy, too. They're all just giving it their all and it's some of their best acting ever. And then the last hour is just shit. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, not really. I mean, there's good stuff in the last hour, but uh, like Tom Cruise's bedside... Uh, the crying scene, for example, is really great. Um, I, uh, to an extent, the uh, the stuff between Melora Mal Walters and John C. Riley, some of it works in the last hour, but not really. I mean, the, it gets a little rushed there. Uh, the Julianne Moore stuff, yeah, it's a little predictable at that point. But um, oh, God, I got, always got to point out. Obviously, well, I mean, the the thing that happens in the last ten minutes, which I won't spoil for those who haven't seen Magnolia. I know there's a few. Uh, definitely see it. But uh, Jason Robards' rambling 10-minute speech about life and stuff, mm, 
Not for me. I always skip over that. <laughs> I mean, I get in some ways it's realistic, but it's like, oh, and I know he's trying to give it his all acting wise because Jason Robards is another legend in that way. But uh, no, no, man, no. I mean, just too much of it. Oh, so um, anyways, um, yeah, that's my rant on that. But uh, <laughs> Uh, but anyways, yeah, PTA is always very interesting. Like, you know, Inherent Vice was another one recently where it's like, yeah, I like some of it, but overall it's not one of his strongest works. Phantom Thread, kind of same thing, you know. Some stuff works, but other stuff does not. Um, uh, geez, what else? Um, obviously, you know, like There Will Be Blood and uh, all that other stuff. Yeah, it's always, you know, good all-around films. But um, yeah, his, his that'll be an interesting one. We'll see if, you know, that young, uh, the son of Philip Seymour Hoffman, who I believe was on one of the Oscar telecasts where I don't know if it was the one where he won for Capote or one of the other ones where he was nominated at least Murray had a son with him sitting next to him I believe it's that same son because I think he maybe he just had the one kid I can't remember but um yeah it'll be really really interesting to see if um uh and I'm sure to an extent if you're cast in a PTA movie you have to have some level of talent of course but uh interested to see just how how widespread that talent is in in his uh in his son and 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 all that that'll be interesting to see and a good I'm sure it'll be a good watch too but um, yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. That one, I believe they have announced is going to come out later this year. So um, I think probably aiming for November, December. So, okay. Anything else? Um, I don't know. I'll tell you what, I have a call. We'll see if it comes true. I think there's a shot. And obviously anything has a shot at this point. But uh, I think there's actually a credible, credible shot that Chloe Zhao is going to be nominated again next year for Eternals. Calling it here first. I think she has a shot at it. Because we've seen a comic book movie be nominated for director. Uh, Todd Phillips got in last year. Um, so it's very possible. And especially somebody like her who's hot off a win for Nomadland. Two wins, technically, for producing and directing Nomadland. I don't know. It could be. It could be. And especially that one, it looks like it's a very inclusive cast. They have uh, What's-Her-Name from Sound of Metal, first deaf actress uh, who gets a big part in a Marvel movie. Um uh, I'm looking forward to her because I thought she was a very, you know, even though she's not a huge part of Sound of Metal, I was like, she looks like she's really got it down. I'm like, I'm looking forward to seeing her in, in Eternals. I think she's she's going to be really good. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, I would have, um, I got to say, I think that actually might be, you know, kind of like, you know, remember Black Panther got a bunch of nominations too. So it's not like the Academy's not going to say no to a relevant uh, in some aspects, maybe even socially relevant, uh, and that one might end up being socially relevant. We don't know the full story yet. Uh, there's history that says they'll go for it. So uh, watch out for that one maybe to get, I don't know if high, high chances in picture. That might be one of those like Another Round or uh, Cold War, or one of those that gets director but not picture. I, I can see that happening at this point too. Um, let's see, I can't remember. Does Spike Lee, does he come out with anything next year? I don't think so, no. I know uh, Glenn Close has a couple projects that might come out soon. Um, I saw the trailer she did, for the one where uh, Mila Kunis is her daughter and they're drug addicts or whatever, or she is, uh, she is, and Glenn Close trying to get her off. And it looked like, you know, they were both giving at least halfway decent performances. Uh, but I know that one, the movie itself, has not getting, gotten great reviews and stuff. Uh, so probably not that one. But I know, uh, I think Sunset Boulevard has been greenlit as a movie. I've heard that on and off through the years, so I don't know if it's for real this time or not. Uh, but she's won, I believe, I, I believe she won the Tony for that, or at least was nominated for playing um, Gloria Swanson's uh, character. Um, why can I not remember her name? <laughs> oh, she's the character name. Oh. oh, I'm such an idiot for not remembering that, but I can pull off Brian Darcy James. There you go. There's his full name for you. Uh, God damn. Uh, anyways, whatever. Um uh, Norma Desmond, there you go, for playing Norma Desmond in uh, the st stage version of uh, Sunset Boulevard. Otherwise, I know there was that Swan Song movie that she's, it's on her IMDb and stuff, I kind of looked it up, and it's her and Mahershala Ali, and it's actually interesting because the director of that film actually is an Oscar winner for short film Stutterer. So that's, I was like, I kind of really hope that one works because, uh, and it's actually, you know, maybe a, a film that's a contender because um, that's, I mean, it's, it doesn't happen that often where one of our, I think he won for live action short. I believe live action short. Uh, it was one of the shorts categories he won for. You know, it's not too often we see somebody who starts in the shorts categories win and then go on to become a huge known acclaimed director who gets nominated again for directing, for example, or another like maybe screenplay or something. It's like, it doesn't happen that often. This would be a cool one if it does. 
Um, and I haven't seen Stutter or anything, but um, uh, but yeah, I knew that I looked up, looked up the director because I'm like, I'm not familiar. Oh, he's an Oscar winner. Okay. <laughs> Uh, but I believe that one is supposed to come out this year. Uh, and Mahershala, it sounded like he's actually the one who has the swan song because he has terminal cancer um, in the film. Uh, let's see, anything else? Else, else, else. Um, I don't know. Nothing else is really sticking out to me right now. Um, I don't know. I mean, obviously, like I said, I don't have a laptop in front of me. I can't go through the... September, October, November, December releases right now, but, um, let's see, was there anything, oh, uh, I think about, a uh, 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 Cannes, was there anything at Cannes that looked, God, I can't, I can't remember anything coming out from Cannes either, but, uh, and that one, I think they're still kind of shaky on when they're going to do it, because I've heard May, then I heard June, and now they're maybe thinking postponing past June, you know, depending on how Europe is doing by that point, um, yeah, I don't know. So, um, yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Next year's Oscars are, are a little bit of a question mark at this point. Um, I'd say other than West Side Story, which we're pretty confident is going to come out. Uh, and of course, this is obviously all, you know, con, you know, considering, you know, the, um, I, I don't want to say too likely, but the likely uh, position that by, you know, the start of Oscar season, the pandemic for the most part is going to be under control, especially here in the U.S., we're going to start getting better control of it in Europe uh, if, not, if we have not already gained a lot of control. And some of the Asian countries right now, like especially India, I mean, we got a lot of work to do there uh, to get people caught up on vaccinations and stuff. Um, hopefully by then, a lot of that stuff is a distant memory and we can look forward to the future there. And then hopefully by then, yes, almost all theaters are back to um, being widely open, all seats available, maybe even no masks. Maybe. Maybe that'd be nice. Um and maybe we can look forward to that in the future here. But um, yeah, so yeah, presuming all that stuff and presuming the Oscar season is going to be kind of more or less back to normal next year as far as the calendar, as far as, um, you know, more, you know, studio contenders and stuff. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, hopefully. Bring it on. Bring it on. <laughs> okay, so uh, anything else we want to say really quick um, about this year's Oscars before we say sayonara? <laughs> Not really. No, I don't think so. I don't know. I mean, 18 out of 23, I'll take it. Getting Best Picture correct again. First time in two years. You know, back-to-back -back years I've gotten that right since, uh, shit, I don't know. It'd be since Birdman, 12 Years a Slave. So, yeah. Uh, we'll keep it going, hopefully, next year. Hopefully, more great predictions and stuff. Um, I'm going to probably run out of time here. So, I wanted to quickly mention, though, um, I'm going to grab a copy here. And I'll, um, unfortunately, yeah, since I don't have my laptop, I don't think I can, uh, it'll, it'll take a while to get a link in the description or whatever, but, uh, this is my book. You can read there, Rise of the Deadman is the title, and that's me. And that is me, a halfway decent picture. <laughs> I have one that I accepted, uh, because I'm a very... I'm uh, terrible with that. But, uh, it's on Amazon. You can buy it on Kindle or get a paperback copy. Uh, definitely, I'm thinking about doing some stuff with that over the summer here, over the, uh, in the off season of the Oscars. Um, I, obviously it's, you know, it's a, uh, as a book, I don't want to post the whole thing to YouTube because then, I don't know, it's kind of like, okay, then everybody can just steal it from there. So I might do like, okay, I might read like, you know, a few, a few sections here and there, a part of the first like 10, maybe, I'm sorry, not 10 because there's only like 16 chapters or whatever, but, um, the first five chapters, maybe I'll just read a section of them and kind of. Uh, entice everybody with that. Um, otherwise, I've got you know a couple trailers on my channel you can go back and find. Uh, I know the first video I did, the first couple of videos I did for the season, I put the a link in the description for where you can uh, purchase it. But uh, otherwise, you can search by my name, uh, and that is. Let's see here. Hopefully, you can read that. Chancy Plagman. You can just search that on Amazon. That for me has been the best way to find it. Uh, just this generic title, Rise of the Deadman, has been kind of hard to find and that's d-e-a-d-m-a-n i believe i spelled that right <laughs> i was thinking about i'm like no i didn't spell it that way no <laughs> uh, i'd say i'm the one who wrote the book i should know but um yeah definitely um uh if you want to uh go ahead and give that a shot and and uh read that then absolutely um so i'll, I'll obviously i'm and i'm writing uh because this is the planned uh and a planned series this is book one so i've got uh I've been working on and off on the second one. I've got, uh, where am I up to? Like 
solid 70 something pages right now that I'm on technically kind of a second draft. Um, I've got like a hundred pages done, but like those next 30 pages are still first draft. And after that, I don't have anything. So I'm going to work on that, uh, through the uh, off season as well. And hopefully, I mean, I don't know if I'll have it done by Oscar season next year uh, for uh, uh, September or whatever, probably not. But, um, but yeah, we'll, uh, uh, hopefully have a lot more done with that. And then, um, I don't really know much else. I mean, college basketball is way over now, <laughs> almost for a full month. Um, I don't know. I don't really have much else going on here. I'll just be working and doing stuff like that and, and all that fun stuff. Um, otherwise, we'll plan on being back here uh, roughly Labor Day weekend. Uh, as I always say, September is our you know pure speculation stage, the true beginning of Oscar predicting. Um, I know some of the Gold Derby stuff and IndieWire, some of those start up right, you know, in the kind of late, oct or sorry, not late October, late August or even mid-August or early August sometimes. Uh, sometimes they'll start throwing out titles and stuff and seeing if they stick and, and everything there. But uh, yeah, and believe it or not, that is th a little over three months. A little over three months we're going to be back here. Hopefully I'll, I'll, I'll clearly have my laptop back by then. <laughs> um, but uh, yet we'll be... Um, Back to speculating again on, on who's going to win these categories. And even with an extended time like this, it leaves you plenty of room to be wrong on some categories. So, um, yeah. Anyway, so I think that's going to wrap it up here. I thought this would be a shorter video, but no, this is about average <laughs> for a type of post-show video like this. And it is kind of the end of the season right now. Um, anyway, so I wanted to... Uh, I'll probably do a separate video here after I have my laptop back, hopefully later this week, and I'll kind of go a little bit more into detail with this. Uh, I might even talk a little bit about some other projects I'm working on, uh, just just to kind of, you know, whet the appetite a little bit. Like I said, there was that 13th script. I want to go into that a little bit. At some point, I want to talk about it, because I, I know it's very unlikely to happen and actually get greenlit, because uh, the studios and uh, uh, Victor Miller and Sean S. Cunningham, they're in a very, I don't think they're still in legal battle. I think they've got that settled. But there's very much a lot of um, question marks as far as when another kind of Friday the 13th type film can go into production or when even a script can be written officially. But I wanted to, I, I don't know, I wanted to talk about it. I won't spoil it, obviously, in case something actually does happen. Then I don't want you guys to all know what happens if you're big fans of the series. But um, yeah, I want to talk about that a little bit. I've got another original screenplay that I've written. Um, and I'm hoping, hoping, hoping in the next few weeks I actually have somebody that I have almost 100% lined up. Uh, we're going to go back and forth and read it um, and uh, kind of see what works, what doesn't work. Um, otherwise, there's a couple other things I wanted to, uh, other than books and stuff, that I wanted to get back to um, and try to write. Um, I know one of them is like a story that's uh, I've been kind of struggling with is if it's set in Chicago or, or L.A., but it's about uh, kind of law enforcement and about uh, detective, uh, kind of, you know, kind of one of those. I kind of think about it like... Um, a kind of an L.A. confidential type, you know, mystery thriller kind of thing. Uh, there's an idea I've worked on that a little bit. I haven't touched that in like a couple of years, though. Um, I know the movie will be called Downtown because that's like where the police station is. It's like everything happens downtown. So it's just a you know, simple title like that. But it would be it'd be one of those where you have like all these characters and kind of kind of like a L.A. confidential where it's like, OK, who's the good guys? Who's the bad guys? Is there any bad cops? You know, all that stuff. It's like a really, you know, uh, interesting one there. And, um, <laughs> I don't know, I'll, I'll, t I'll probably talk about it in the video, but I know the ending. I know the ending. I'm ripping it off of, um, for the Red Letter Media fans, I'm ripping it off of Surviving Edge Weapons. <laughs> Very in-joke, I'm sure, for some of you who are not familiar with that, but look up the uh, Surviving Edge Weapons Red Letter Media video, and you'll, you'll thank me later. <laughs> uh, if you haven't seen it, but, um, yeah, I'm, I'm ripping something right off of that for the ending of it. Um... And then there was one other, I, I thought about it as a play at first, writing it as kind of play format. Um, but uh, um, I don't know. I, I think it would work better as a screenplay. And it's, uh, I don't know, without getting too much into it, it's called The Bare Minimum. And it's kind of like a gangster story a little bit. Uh, kind of like, I'm kind of, and I had it written down like the other, uh, so, you know, when I first started this new job, there were a couple moments where I had downtime and I'm like, Okay, I kind of started writing out notes about it and stuff because you know, I was thinking about maybe that'll be one of my next things I do, and um, and yeah, that was one that uh, th you know kind of a lot of ideas came to mind. I'm like, okay, so the first act is very you know kind of um, simplistic in the way that it's kind of uh, this, and the second act is more 
like the you know, good fellows where every other word is the F word and where it's a little more perverse and it's a little more, you know, uh, violent and stuff. And then, or even casino in that way. And then the third act would kind of be a little bit more like the Irish one, a little more reserved, a little, you know, there's some violence and some language, but less than we saw in act two and stuff. And we see a time period shift. We see, you know, kind of fifties at first, kind of early sixties, and then going into like, you know, uh, early sixties in the second act and then kind of late sixties in the, in the third act. Um, so that one, oh, and I do, I, based off my own experience, there is a uh, script that I wrote. Um, it was kind of, it started out as like a mini script and now, you know, I kind of look back on it and I'm like, okay, I need to work on it a little bit more to get it a little longer because right now it's kind of short. It's like 70, I think right around 70 pages. Uh, but that's based around my own experiences with um, uh, kind of a romance story. So I'll just leave it at that. We might We might talk about that one. And then the last thing would be, after I get the second book done, for sure, I want to start on it. It would be kind of, part of it would be kind of research, but I want to do a um, kind of a little coffee table kind of book um, about my, uh, uh, not my immediate family, but my, uh, I kind of mentioned my grandmother passed away from Alzheimer's. It'd be her family. So it'd be like my mom and her siblings and how they grew up and getting to the grandkids, myself included. There's like 13 of us total uh, that were, you know, um, born by the uh, the four kids that my grandparents had. And then there were uh, three other, you know, kind of step grandkids that came in. So it's like 16 of us all together um, and everything. So kind of our, I mean, obviously my experience and their experience. So I, I kind of want to, especially with COVID, after that's all done, everybody's that wants to get vaccinated and my family does get vaccinated. Um, then I can kind of go around and uh, interview everybody and get all the stories. And I mean, it's going to be tons of stories because my aunts and uncles and my mother, oh, they were brats. <laughs> oh, they got, they, there's tons of great stories there. Uh, I mean, I had an uncle that was like an arm wrestling champion. I mean, small, I mean, it's a very small <laughs> uh, area there. Uh, I mean, my aunt has a gr lot of great stories. Uh, my uncle, uh, other uncle, oh my God, he is such a troublemaker. <laughs> I mean, even right now, I'm sure he's off doing something uh, <laughs> that'll, you know, you know, most society would kind of upturn their nose to and stuff. But, um, tons of great stories and everything and it's you know and my grandpa you know basically was a you know farmer and stuff so especially for like you know i'm from iowa you know there's not a lot of great books that are out about just about farming life and stuff so i think just in our even our uh, my small town area where i'm from and stuff i mean I, I think it'd be a book that a lot of people would would get their hands on immediately and just read through because i mean even if it's not their family they know they know these stories they know this type of person in their family and stuff. So I, I definitely, that's, that's something I'm very excited about. Definitely. Um, I'm going to get moving on to, and it's kind of motivating, motivating me a little bit to get through the second book, uh, in this, um, winter loan series, by the way, it's the wind loan series. And that's, yeah, this is somebody's copy. I haven't given it to him yet, but, uh, and it's, it's a relatively, this one, it's a kind of short read. It's two, where did I end on here again? 245, 245 pages. Um, and like I said, first in the series, so there's cliffhangers. It kind of ends, especially on a big cliffhanger, uh, going into the second book and stuff. But um, uh, okay, just okay. Last thing, I'll read the back of it just so you know. Uh, Twenty uh, three twenty year olds from Earth are about to discover the world of Winterlone, a topographical inversion of Earth. Winterlone is home to dozens of countries, millions of people, and thirteen men who have come back from the dead and are attempting to take over. Alongside new allies, it is now up to James Realms, Amanda Richardson, and Laura Jacobson to start a war against a force that may be unstoppable. So there's your kind of three-paragraph Star Wars <laughs> crawl there for you. So anyway, so like I said, it's kind of getting to that next, the family book, whatever, that's kind of motivating, motivating me to get through that second book, not speed through it, of course, but, you know, saying, okay, get to work on this, you know, get, you know, we'll get everything going here and we'll, um, uh, then we'll kind of start that. So, um, yeah, so obviously, you know, I'm going to fit in Oscar season and everything else, you know, personal life and everything else will kind of be in between, of course. But, um, yeah, so, uh, I don't know. I, I kind of feel like doing a couple of, you know, things like that in the meantime, just to let you guys know what I'm up to, what I'm working on and stuff like that. And, um, like I said, I'm sure we'll, uh, well, I'll try, try to get some stuff like, um, passages of the book and stuff, um, you know, uh, recorded and stuff you know i've got my good mic here that, that'll work pretty well obviously i can't use it today but um you know i'll be able to film it you know in a pretty good spot i think where i'm not going to get a lot of people yelling from <laughs> other rooms and stuff other apartments and everything or dogs barking outside all that great shit you know that you don't want ruining your videos 
So, um, yeah, and it should be a spot, I mean, it won't be in this room, but uh, it should be a spot where I don't get a lot of electrical back feed either. So I know I know that's always something I'm, I'm worried about when I'm filming stuff, but uh, anyways. Okay, are we done here? I think we're done here. So uh, anyway, so yeah, again, this is on Amazon uh, through uh, KDP and all that. So uh, oh, there went my vaccine card. <laughs> Sorry, got to close up my face. Again, first dose only, but uh, planning on, yeah, I'll get the second one here and... Um, I know I, I briefly showed this the other day and I'm sure some people were like, oh, that's not real. He faked it, but no, it's real. Um, Mar uh, May 15th is my date. So um, I will be fully vaccinated as of two or three weeks after that. So anyway, so, um, and I don't mean to plug, but it's like, absolutely. Yeah. If, if you're, uh, you know, as long as you don't, because I know some people, if you get a vaccine, it actually does like affect you and stuff. I mean, if it's, if it's not going to be healthy for you, don't get it. But otherwise everybody else, please, um, if you're considering it, you know, uh, do it, do it. Absolutely. Don't be on the fence about it too long. You, you'll end up not doing it. And you know, we don't know, we don't know what the consequence, consequences could be, but, um, but yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. Uh, yeah, I feel like I'm going on too long here. So yeah. So I'm hoping later this week, yeah, we'll do that video. I'll go into some other stuff I'm working on just for fun, just kind of a little filler there. Uh, and then I should, after that, probably get started on my, uh, recordings there. So all right. Okay, it's going to be a little awkward kind of doing this because I know the stop button is right there. And I know it's going to be really weird to go in and <laughs> do that. But oh, well. Okay, so yeah, Oscars for 2021. We will see ya. It's been nice knowing ya. We, we You were around for a lot longer than a lot of your predecessors. But uh, that's going to do it. That's going to do it. All right, so this is the first time, by the way, I'm also uploading from YouTube just from my phone. So we'll see how well that goes. So um, so please, by all means, if this is not up uh, right away here, then that's that's why. But uh, I always try to get my uh, post reactions and stuff up as soon as I can. But obviously, this was a little bit of a, turned into a little bit of a longer video. But we'll, uh, we'll go from there. So all right. Bye-bye, guys.